Hello, thank you for watching this Red Pill Network report. I am Jane and I will be your guide throughout the awakening. Declassified memos show FBI legally shared spy data on Americans with private parties. Excellent reporting by John Solomon and Sarah Carter from CircaNews.com in his final congressional testimony. Before he was fired by President Trump this month, then FBI Director James Comey unequivocally told lawmakers his agency used sensitive espionage data gathered about Americans without a warrant, only when it was lawfully collected, carefully overseen and checked. One stop secret U.S. intelligence community memos reviewed by Circa tell a different story, citing instances of disregard for rules, inadequate training, and deficient oversight and even one case of deliberately sharing spy data with a forbidden party. For instance, a ruling declassified this month by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, FISA, chronicles nearly 10 pages listing hundreds of violations of the FBI's privacy protecting minimization rules that occurred on Comey's watch. The behavior the FBI admitted to a FISA judge just last month ranged from illegally sharing raw intelligence with unauthorized third parties to accessing intercepted attorney-client privileged communications without proper oversight the Bureau promised was in place years ago. The court also opined aloud that it fears the violations are more extensive than already disclosed. The court is nonetheless concerned about the FBI's apparent disregard of minimization rules, and whether the FBI is engaging in similar disclosures of raw Section 702 information that have not been reported, the April 2017 ruling declared. The court is not the only oversight body to disclose recent concerns that the FBI's voluntary system for policing its behavior and self-disclosing mistakes has not been working. The Justice Department Inspector General's office declassified a report in 2015 that reveals the internal watchdog had concerns as early as 2012 that the FBI was submitting deficient reports indicating it had a clean record complying with spy data gathered on Americans without a warrant. The FBI normally is forbidden from surveilling an American without a warrant. But Section 702 of the Foreign Surveillance Act last updated by Congress in 2008, allowed the NSA to share with the FBI spy data collected without a warrant, that includes the communications of Americans with foreign targets. But the FISA court watchdogs suggest FBI compliance problems began months after Section 702 was implemented. The FBI's very first compliance report in 2009 declared it had not found any instances in which agents accessed NSA intercepts supposedly gathered overseas about an American who in fact was on U.S. soil. But the IG said it reviewed the same data and easily found evidence that the FBI accessed NSA data gathered on a person who likely was in the United States, making it illegal to review without a warrant. We found several instances in which the FBI acquired communications on the same day that the NSA determined through analysis of intercepted communications that the person was in the United States, the declassified report revealed. It called the FBI's first oversight report deficient and urged better oversight. FBI officials acknowledged there have been violations but insist they are a small percentage of the total counterterrorism and counterintelligence work its agents perform. Almost all are unintentional human errors by good-intentioned agents, and analysts under enormous pressure to stop the next major terror attack, the officials said. Others fear these blunders call into the question the Bureau's rosy assessment that it can still police itself when it comes to protecting Americans' privacy 17 years after the war on terror began. That doubt, heaviest among civil libertarian Democrats, but also growing among Republicans, is particularly sensitive, because the law that allows the Bureau to access warrantless spy data about Americans, Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, is up for renewal later this year. Lawmakers in both parties and both chambers of Congress are writing reforms behind closed door, leaving the intelligence community anxious it might lose some of the spy powers it considers essential to fighting terrorism, 
cyber attacks and unlawful foreign influence. No one on the Hill wants to look like we are soft on terrorism, when you have increasing threats like Manchester-style attacks. But the evidence of abuse or sloppiness, and the unending leaks of sensitive intelligence in the last year has emboldened enough of us to pursue some reforms, a senior congressional aide told Circa, speaking only on condition of anonymity, because he was not authorized to talk to the media. Where that new line between privacy and security is drawn will depend on how many more shoes fall before the 702 renewal happens. Representative Trent Frank, a member of the House Judiciary Committee that will help craft the 702 renewal legislation, said the rising revelation of problems about improper spying on Americans are having an effect on lawmakers who have long supported the intelligence community. The bottom line is the law has to be followed, and when it is not there has to be consequence, that is of significance, so that it deters others from breaking the same law, he told Circa. One of the biggest concerns involves, so-called backdoor searches in which the FBI can mine and essay intercept data for information, that may have been incidentally collected about an American. No warrant or court approval is required and the FBI insists these searches are one of the most essential tools in combating terrorist plots. But a respected former Justice Department National Security Prosecutor questions if the searching has got into Cavalier. Amy Jeffress, the former top security advisor to former Attorney General Eric Holder, was appointed by the Intelligence Court in 2015 to give an independent assessment of the FBI's record of compliance. Jeffress concluded agent searches of NSA data now extend far beyond national security issues, and thus were overstepping the constitutional protections designed to ensure the Bureau is not violating Americans' Fourth Amendment protections against unlawful search and seizure. The FBI procedures allow freely virtually unrestricted querying of the Section 702 data in a way the NSA and CIA have restrained it through their procedures she argued before the court in a sealed 2015 proceeding. I think that in this case the procedures could be tighter and more restrictive, and should be in order, to comply with the Fourth Amendment, she added. The court thanked Jeffress for her thoughtful analysis, but ultimately rejected her recommendation, to impose on the FBI requirement of creating a written justification, why each search would help pursue a national security or criminal matter, The Justice Department argued in that matter that the extra restriction would keep FBI agents from connecting the dots in terror cases and compared NSA searches to something Americans do every day. If we require our agents to write a full justification every time think about if you wrote a full justification every time you used Google, among other things, you would use Google a lot less, the lawyer told the court. That was late in 2015. But by early 2017, the court became more concerned after the Obama administration disclosed significant violations of privacy protections at two separate intelligence agencies involved in the Section 702 program. The most serious involved the NSA searching for American data it was forbidden to search. But the FBI also was forced to admit its agents and analysts shared espionage data with prohibited third parties, ranging from a federal contractor to a private entity, that did not have the legal right to see the intelligence. Such third-party sharing is a huge political concern now as Congress and intelligence community leaders try to stop the flow of classified information to parties that could illegally disclose or misses it, such as the recent leak that disclosed intercepted communications between the Russian ambassador and Trump's first national security adviser, Michael Flynn. The court's memo suggested the FBI's sharing of raw intelligence to third parties, at the time, had good law enforcement intentions, but bad judgment and inadequate training. Nonetheless, the above-described practices violated the governing minimization procedures, the court chided. A footnote in the ruling stated one instance of improper sharing was likely intentional. 
improper access to NSA spy data for FBI contractors seems to have been the result of deliberate decision-making, the court noted. The recently unsealed ruling also revealed the FBI is investigating more cases of possible improper sharing with private parties that recently have come to light. The government is investigating whether there have been similar cases in which the FBI improperly afforded non-FBI personnel access to officer required information on FBI systems, the court warned. The ruling cited other FBI failures in handling Section 702 Intel, including retaining data on computer storage systems in violation of applicable minimization requirements. Among the most serious additional concerns was the FBI's failure for more than two years to establish review teams to ensure intercepts between targets, and their lawyers are not violating the attorney-client privilege. Failures of the FBI to comply with this review team requirement for particular targets have been focus of the FISA concerns since 2014, the court noted. The FBI said it is trying to resolve the deficiencies with aggressive training of agents. That admission of inadequate training directly undercut Comey's testimony earlier this month, when questioned by Senator Dianne Feinstein nobody gets to see FISA information of any kind unless they've had the appropriate training, and have the appropriate oversight, the soon-to-be-fired FBI director assured lawmakers. The struggle for the intelligence court and lawmakers, in providing future oversight will be where to set more limits without hampering counterterrorism effort the FBI told Circa in a statement, is indicated in its opinion, the court determined that the past and current standard minimization procedures are consistent with the Fourth Amendment, and met the statutory definition of those procedures under Section 702. Jeffress, however, warned in her 2015 brief of another dynamic, that will pose a challenge to, in FBI culture to use the tool more, just because it can. These scenarios suggest a potentially very large, and broad scope of incidental collection of communications between a lawful target and U.S. persons, that are not the type of communications Section 702 was designed to collect, she told the court in a written memo. And when questioned at a subsequent hearing, Jeffress observed, I do not think that the FBI will voluntarily set limits on its querying procedures, because law enforcement agencies tend not to take steps to restrict or limit what they can do, for obvious reasons. Quote, declassified memos show FBI illegally shared spy data on Americans with private parties. Sarah Carter and John Solomon join us now with all the details. Sarah, good evening. I'll begin with you. Uh, If you can explain to the viewers how this process actually works with the FBI illegally sharing the information about Americans with third parties. Yes, well, Kimberly, what we discovered through these documents, which were recently declassified by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, was stunning. What they said was that the FBI was illegally sharing warrantless spy data. That means they did not have a warrant and they were sharing it with third parties. And in one case, they shared it with a party. They didn't explain who that party was, but it was a forbidden party, a party that was not allowed to have this type of raw intelligence. Another thing that they stated was that not only did they do that, but they were intercepting communications, attorney client privileged communications without oversight. So very little oversight. This didn't happen once or twice. This was hundreds of times. And another thing that they mentioned was that there was very little oversight overall in what the FBI was accessing through the NSA database. And I think this is very concerning because this is the first time that we've actually heard that the FBI, not just the NSA, which John and I broke uh, just several days ago, uh, you know, that the FBI itself was also dabbing into the database and moving raw intelligence around uh, that actually affected our Fourth Amendment rights and our privacy rights as Americans. It's really unbelievable. This is an explosive story. It's really a bombshell in terms of the flagrant violation of people's privacy rights. I mean, 
Tom, were you shocked, really, at just sort of the extent of this and the far reach? I'd like to say it was, but I'm not. And the more that we dig into the spying that went on in the Obama administration and these expansion of powers, the more we see that the Fourth Amendment has been abused or certainly put at risk. And I think one of the things that uh, you ask a lot of times, we hear a lot of talk in Washington about all these leaks. Where do they come from? Well, the more you pass this stuff down, it goes from the NSA to the FBI, then the FBI to private citizens. That's how you're going to get a trail of leaks. And I think that you know, if they want to stop this, they've got to tighten it up. What, what do they do, Sarah, though, to tighten it up? John brings up a great point because everybody at home is frustrated. Like, really? They get this in check. What is going on that people literally don't feel that there's going to be any repercussion, any kind of criminal or civil repercussion for what they're doing, violating the laws here and violating the privacy rights of American citizens? Well, there's a couple of things that they can do, Kimberly. We know right now that they're going to launch a massive investigation into the leaks. It's going to be very interesting to see where these leaks came from. I believe that some of these leaks came from very high up because some of the information, for example, when you're dealing with Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, mm -hmm. that would have been a very small number of people that would have had access to those tech cuts. Now, if they talked about it and put it in emails, then that leak expansion could be a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, but still, according to my sources, it's very narrow. Another thing that I believe can be done is that Congress right now is planning on investigating this. Remember, Section mm -hmm. 702 is coming up for review. Um, this FISA Section 702, which allows uh, the NSA to basically collect information on non-U.S. citizens overseas and those incidental intercepts are happening where they're collecting Americans' information as well is coming for review at the end of the year. Uh, Daryl Issa, uh, Trent Franks, mm -hmm. others who've spoken to us say that they're going to look at this law, They're going to, and some of them aren't even going to vote for it unless it's revised. Well, it has to be. I mean, this is a, a real big problem, especially when you look back at the time frame and the chronology, John, in terms yep. of how far back this goes and the pervasiveness of it. It does. 2011, Barack yeah. Obama changed the rules, and ever since that time, we saw a tripling of the sort of spying on Americans going on, and now we see these leaks and violations. And I think an unusual coalition is going to come together. You're going to see the ACLU and conservatives agreeing on something for the first time and trying to fix <laughs> when this uh, bill comes up for a renewal this uh, fall. Okay, how quick do you think the turnaround on this in terms of being able to do something to stop the leaks? Uh, well, they, they have to put someone, they have to arrest someone, right? They have to find someone and make an example. That's the fastest way to stop a leaking uh, problem. But, but you just look every day, there are 10, 20 looks. Even the British yeah. are mad at us. Well, the president certainly vowing to do something about this, and uh, I think he's going to get to the bottom of it. Sarah and John, thank you so much. Keep up with the great work at Circa. Thank you for your support and for watching this report by the Red Pill Network. Please subscribe for daily updates and live streams. Please be kind and share. And be sure to live every day, as if it is your last.